Baku, Azerbaijan, where the east and the west meet. A gateway, a place to begin and end journeys, part of the Silk Road, an ancient trading route connecting so much of humanity, bringing precious riches from one place to another. All roads lead to Paris, a Silk Road, a Golden Road, an Olympic dream. At the National Gymnastics Arena in Baku, the gymnasts of the world have converged on the shores of the Caspian Sea to try to earn their place at the showpiece occasion in the sport, Paris 2024. The Olympiad beckons, it's months away, it's round the corner, it's almost upon us, and this is the penultimate Olympic qualification event in the World Cup calendar. After Doha next month, precious few spots will remain. Continental qualification places for most of the continents are still to be decided. They will be the last opportunity. There will be an invitational place, a tripartite place, the very final opportunity. Time is running out to seize the opportunity and to put destiny in your own hands. The best of fortune to all of the gymnasts taking part in Olympic qualification today. This is a complicated one. You're going to see five finals over the next two and a half hours of entertainment and it will be entertainment. It will be nerve wracking. It will be scintillating. It will be joy and agony combined because this is Olympic qualification. There will be athletes today who do something that all but guarantees their place at the Olympiad. There will be athletes today that do something that all but removes their chances of going to Paris 2024. There is no more honest way to put it than that. For every athlete that makes it, there is an athlete that doesn't make it. In fact, there are many, many more that do not make it because only the select few can go to the Olympic Games. For those that miss out, there are no words that we can offer to provide succour. This comes around only every four years. It is a lifetime dream for gymnasts. Some of the athletes that you're going to see today have done it before. They know this road, they know World Cup qualification, they know how to get to the end of the process. Others are embarking on their senior careers. They're new to this. Some didn't get to go to Tokyo. And now at a more advanced stage of their gymnastics careers, Paris may be their final opportunity. Others are absolutely in peak form right now. Now is their time. In essence, every single athlete has a different journey. Whoever you're supporting, whoever you're cheering for, wherever you're from, I'm sure you'll agree with me that we get behind every single one of these athletes and wish them the best of fortune and hope that whatever happens they can attempt to qualify for Paris 2024 on their terms that they can leave this process knowing they gave it their all enough hypothesizing it's time to begin welcome to Baku and the World Cup of Artistic Gymnastics, the penultimate World Cup in Olympic qualification. Five finals coming up, the women's balance beam and floor exercise, the men's vault, pommel horse and horizontal bar. Five pathways to Paris. Two athletes will qualify from each of the five pathways today and the five yesterday, 10 pathways in all, 20 athletes that will earn an apparatus-specific qualification route to Paris 2024. Not every gymnast 
that you will see today is trying to qualify for the Olympic Games. I'll look at the intricacies in more detail once we see the field. These are the men's vault finalists. And these are the women's balance beam finalists. The two finals will run in tandem. That will also be the case for the uh, gentlemen on the pommel horse alongside the women's floor exercise. And then we'll have the men's horizontal bar as a standalone final at the end of our coverage. Let's look at the runners and riders. Zhang Qingying of the People's Republic of China, second best in qualification, reigning Asian champion. Elisa Iorio of Italy, part of a team that has qualified for the Games and a world championship medalist. Takazawa Kauruko, a senior international debut for the 19-year-old. Tinghua Tien of Chinese Taipei, Asian Games bronze medalist and an Asian champion on beam in 2019. Andresa Lima of Brazil, a medalist at the South American Youth Games on balance beam. She's just 16. Nina Derwal of Belgium, a front runner for qualification for Paris through this route. Kelly Nemour of Algeria, already secure of a place at the Games and the uneven bars champion from yesterday. And Julia Suarez of Brazil, the third best performer in qualification and already a champion in Baku in 2022. Over to the men's vault, Aurel Benovic of Croatia, the sixth best in qualification, eight times a World Cup medalist. Mohamed Amy of Malaysia, Asian Games bronze medalist last year. Tseng Wei Sheng of Chinese Taipei World University Games silver medalist last year. Nazar Ciperni of Ukraine, Youth Olympic Games champion in 2018 and the World Championship bronze medalist last year. Don Cunningham of Ireland, a finalist at World Championship level and a Commonwealth Games medalist on vault. Harry Hepworth of Great Britain, already multiple World Cup medalist on floor and vault. Jorna Rehman of Finland, the junior champion of Europe from 2022 and the European Youth Olympic Festival champion in 2022. Shek Wai Hung of Hong Kong, China, twice an Asian Games champion on vault and the top performer in qualification. The finalists in the balance beam competition and the top performer in qualification Kelia Nemour of Algeria, who will be the penultimate gymnast to go. The second best in qualification will get us underway. Zhang Qingying, the 16-year-old from the People's Republic of China. And she is the reigning champion of Asia on beam. And that came about a year after winning the Chinese Youth Championship title. Over to Vault. The top performer in qualification will be the last gymnast to go. She Kui Hung of Hong Kong, China. Somebody who has got Olympic aspirations through this route and will be seeking to improve upon his performance in Cottbus, having started the season with a bronze medal in Cairo. Second best in qualification, Harry Hepworth of Great Britain. He will go a couple before Shekwai Hung, and he is part of a team that's already qualified for the Games. Let's have a look at who is in the Olympic qualification race across the two finals. On balance beam, we have quite a few gymnasts in this final who are part of teams that have already qualified or who have already secured themselves a spot via 
other routes at the World Championships. So in the beam competition, Jang, Yorio, Takezawa, Lima, Namur and Suarez are not part of the qualification pathway here. That leaves Tinghua Tien, who will go fourth, Nina Dual, who will go sixth and who is in a very, very good position. Those are the two that we'll be really focusing on in the beam final from a Paris point of view. Over on the men's vault, Benovic, Aimi, Tseng, Cunningham, Raymond and Sheck are all attempting to qualify via this route. So most of the men's vault competitors, only two, are not attempting Paris qualification through this route. Nothing is mathematically signed, sealed and delivered until after the Doha World Cup. So even if a gymnast looks as though they are mathematically secure, protocol dictates it is not confirmed until after the fourth and final World Cup. Zhang Jingying of the People's Republic of China gets us underway on balance beam. Second best in qualification. Reigning champion of Asia. A lovely fluid beginning. The qualification score was 14.3. The Chinese team already has qualified for the Games, therefore their gymnasts are not eligible for qualification via this route. Now that was performed nicely. Yeah, very secure looking double pike to conclude the routine. Zhang Qingying with a very authoritative start. Execution was 7.9 in qualification. Interesting to see how that compares here. Now we go over to the vaulting table and Aurel Benovic of Croatia. Twenty three year old from Osijek, a great gymnastic city in World Cup competition. Well, we've already had the uh, first vault from uh, Howell Benovich. We'll just come back to that in a moment. Let's have a look at this uh, second vault. So he employs a nice looking Roche as his second vault. Harold Benovic. Just to confirm, he had a, a 14.833 for the first vault. Fourteen point eight three three from Benevich for vault number one was over two tenths stronger than qualification, higher difficulty scored than the Roche. 
14.233 for Jang. Virtually the same as qualification, down by less than a tenth. We go to Elisa Iorio of Italy. Turns 21 in just over a week's time. It's her first World Cup of the season. Good controlled mount. And she performed well in the uneven bars finally yesterday, getting onto the podium. Just a little tentative on the leaps. Otherwise fluid and with an expressive sense of choreography. And just off on the acrobatic sequence. Back with good control in the front walkover. Oh, goodness, that was a nasty-looking landing. Fortunately, she uh, seems to be none the worse for wear. Now, Aurel Benovic, 14.599. So he is up from qualification, 14.366 for the second vault, an improvement of almost two-tenths to... Mohamed Daimi of Malaysia, the bronze medalist at the Asian Games in Hangzhou last year. An improvement of sixth place, or from sixth place, I should say, at the Asian Championships. Just 20 from Terengganu on the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia. Great to see him developing as a senior after he had a bad injury, fracturing his left knee during his junior to senior transition. Roche from him, nice sense of uh, time in the air. Smooth and precise. And great performance. He judged that really well, didn't he? And one imagines that over time the target for him will be to add in the uh, extra four tenths of difficulty for the half twist out to uh, make that into a Dragulescu and it probably will end up being a rather nice one. His score was 14.6 in qualification and 9.4 for execution. Probably be uh, similar, maybe not quite as high. 14.466. So he is down uh, just a fraction from an execution standpoint. Indicating a uh, Kasamatsu one and a half as his second vault. What's been nice to see about uh, Muhammad Aimi is his consistency increasing and his difficulty is increasing. We'll come back to him in a moment with good reason. 10.933 for Elisa Yorio. Takazawa Karuko of Japan. Nineteen year old 
from Shizuoka Prefecture, the uh, prefecture that partially contains uh, Mount Fuji. Quite close to Tokyo. She was fifth at the All Japan Senior Championships in September. Controls the side so well. Good stability in the wolf turns. A nice senior international debut from her. Takazawa Karuko. Now, I was just talking about the difficulty of uh, Mohamed Aimi. He actually chose to downgrade that second vault. 14.099. Just come back and confirm that in a moment as his uh, aggregate score. 13.733. So, four tenths of a drop from qualification. He was indicating that he was going to perform a uh, Kasamatsu one and a half, just went for the Kasamatsu full. He has had consistency issues of late, so it's perhaps a sensible decision just to go for solid landings and good execution. Now we see Tseng Weisheng of Chinese Taipei. Oh, he's got that just right. Very good landing. This is a gymnast who was seventh in Cottbus. He didn't make the final in Cairo. So this is very, very important for him. This is the Lou Vault, the Tsukahara double pike. It's maybe a slightly open angle of the pike. This is the gymnast who finished second at the World University Games in Chengdu last year. This should score well. 14.866. That's a long way up from qualification. And for somebody who is looking to keep himself in the game going into Doha, that's a good, good beginning. Now, the second vault is due to be a roche at uh, four tenths lower. So 5.2. This needs to be really, really crisp. Oh, well done from Tseng Wei Sheng. He reacts with jubilation. That will score well, as did this from Takezawa Kauruko, 13.933. She is up by eight tenths from qualification. She was the seventh best performer in the preliminary round, goes into second place. On balance beam, representing Chinese Taipei also, Huai Tian Ting. Ting Hua Tian of Chinese Taipei. Bronze medalist at the Hangzhou Asian Games last year, the delayed games. 22, already has competed at the Olympic Games. The balance beam qualification pathway is quite open for a lot of gymnasts chasing Nina Derwal. We won't have a very clear picture until we go into Doha. For Ting, she was ninth in Cottbus, so did get points, but this is her first final.
This has had a real sense of polish. And she dismounts soundly too. Ting Hua Tien, 13.2 in qualification. Her teammate Tseng Wei Sheng, 14.616. 14.366 for the second vault. So he has improved by three tenths from qualification. And Tseng goes into second place. So we've seen three gymnasts. Sorry, correction there. Tseng has gone into first place. We've seen three gymnasts performing who are all attempting to qualify for Paris through the vault pathway at the World Cups. Now we go to Nazar Ciperni, who's part of a Ukrainian team that's already qualified. Ergo, for him, this is about preparation, not qualification. He produces the first Dragulescu that we've seen of the day. And he does it well. He is the reigning world university's champion on vault. Certainly seemed to have plenty of time in the air to judge that uh, extra half twist to add four tenths of difficulty to the Roche. Comfortably operating with two 5.6 difficulty vaults, Ciperni. So of the four that we've seen so far, he has four tenths over two of them in difficulty and uh, eight tenths over one of them. That's Aimee in difficulty. And he picked up a point one penalty for this vaulting qualification. No danger of that here. 14.8. So he is three tenths up from the preliminary round and is in line to go into the lead if he can match this with the second vault, which should be a Kasamatsu double. Oh, very good, very good from Ciperni. That's the new leader. The undergraduate at the National University of Physical Culture and Sports. Ting Hua Tien, 12.966. Difficulty 5.2. She's down by two tenths from qualification. So she's in third position at the halfway stage. Zhang Xingying leading by three tenths over Takezawa Kauruko. I don't think there's going to be any doubt about the leader at the halfway stage on vault. 14.9, the average of 15 exactly for the second vault. So Ciperni is up by two and a half tenths from qualification. So of the four that we've seen, three have improved from qualifying. Just Mohamed Aimi dropping down, but he did make that decision to downgrade his second vault. In the men's vault, Japoni leads. Tseng is second. That's good news for him. Because when it comes to the points allocation, the gymnasts who are not eligible for Paris 2024 qualification are removed from the standings. The highest points haul you can get is 30. That's for being the top placed potential Olympic qualifier in your pathway. We're looking there at Ireland's Dom Cunningham. He will be the next to go. Over on beam, we've still got the first, third and fourth strongest qualifiers to come. There is the top qualifier, 17-year-old Kelly Namur of Algeria. 
developing enormously as an all-around uh, prospect. Really quite exciting. Yes, she has this stellar uneven bars routine and, and quite rightly the world is talking about it, but there must be more than an afterthought given to her all-around prospects as well. What she does not have in terms of enormous difficulty vaulting, she certainly compensates for with the quality of score that she can produce on the uneven bars. When you add to that her good work on beam and her secure tumbling on floor, it's a very complete picture emerging. Gymnast representing Brazil, Andresa Eloisa Lima de Lima. Welcome to World Cup competition, Andresa Lima of Brazil. She's just 16 from Sao Paulo State. Yet to compete at World Championship level two, but she's got a very good collection of America's medals. She's been on the South American Championship podium on vault. And as a junior, she won four medals at the South American Youth Games, including a silver on beam. So this is a prospect, a real prospect. Takes a little back step just to stabilise herself, but that's OK. It's pacey and expressive. Very nice walkover, trying to go directly into those jumps. Had a lovely snap coming out of the free walkover. It was performed with authority. Unfortunately, just a little offline on the leaps. Oh, just overcooked the uh, double tuck to dismount. Again, she showed real strength and composure to stabilise that. That's an exciting gymnast that we're watching. 13 was her score in qualification. Always a joy to see this gentleman. Dom Cunningham of Ireland, formerly of the British team. And he has been a, a medalist on vault at the uh, Commonwealth Games. Oh, lovely. Schufelt from uh, Dom Cunningham. Two and a half Walmart. twisting Yachenko. Originated Walmart. by the great Karl Schufelt. He performs this really well. Does have a little loss of form, perhaps in flight. But the stability of the landing, impressive. Tom Cunningham, not yet qualified for the Games. I just remind you that there are still pathways for gymnasts, but just the one of them at continental level. One all-around spot to be awarded at the Continental Championships. Now, Cunningham scored 14.466 for his first vault in qualification. It was handsomely the uh, best. Execution-wise, it was half a mark up from the second, and that's up overall from qualifying. 14.533, 9.333, really well performed that vault.
He's a little low, but with the experience of Dom Cunningham, he knows how to get out of a slightly awkward landing, showed great strength and poise to hold that. 12.266 for Andres Lima. Absolutely a work in progress and one to be excited about if you're a fan of the Brazilian team. And that is most of the gymnastics world. Please welcome next finalist on balance beam representing Belgium, Nina Derweil. Nina Derweil of Belgium, fourth best in qualification, champion in Cairo, fifth in Cottbus, front runner to secure one of the two berths for Paris. Absolutely elegant mount that, that was so well controlled. This is a gymnast who has competition steel. She has over the course of her career proven again and again. There's an example with the side somersault that she knows how to arrest a small problem. She did the same thing in Cottbus when there was an issue during her routine, she stayed on. And then from that small issue to go into very well executed wolf turns. And that uh, lovely twisting gainer dismount from Nina Derval. 14.133. Cunningham is in fourth position. He's having a nice time on the couch. 13.733 for the second vault. He's a lovely chap, Dom Cunningham. He was the one of the two arena presenters along with Denusia Francis at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham in 2022 and uh, if ever there was a man born to G up a crowd it's Dom Cunningham. Harry Hepworth of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland second best in qualification Oh, it's a massive Dragulescu. He's getting really good time in the air, and that's allowing him to be secure moving round into the half twist. Just have a look at that power. Good symmetry. He's fully aware of where he is, and he's very upright. Yes, there's a little backwards hop as he lands, but if you look at the chest position of Hepworth as he lands that Dragulescu, that's very encouraging. Because the Dragulescu, as I'm sure many of you know, is a vault that can be often quite piked in the landing position. Fourteen point eight. That is better by two tenths than qualification, and that's quite clear to see why. Really good form in the air, good landing position. He's starting to make very compelling statements. Yes, very good. Very good vaulting from Great Britain's Harry Hepworth. A yo vault named after the 1996 Olympic vault silver medalist. Yo Hong Chol. 13.766 for Nina Durval. That puts her into third position 
But in terms of the Olympic qualification pathway, that's the best score. Because Zhang, who's in first place, is part of a team that's qualified. Takizawa, who's second, is part of a team that's qualified. So Derval has done exactly what she needed to do because there are only two in that beam final going for the qualification spot. So Derval has picked up the maximum points haul. To Kelly Nemour of Algeria, top qualifier. That's beautiful. Straight from the mount into some acrobatic work. 14.533, her qualification score. Oh, that's unfortunate. The foot just went off. Does get good height in her leaps, tries to get the legs to a strong horizontal position. Smooth Corbett flip. Her double pike has real clarity to dismount. Harry Hepworth, 14.866. He goes into second place, 14.933 for his second vault. So that puts him just behind Nazar Ciponi by a matter of a few hundreds. Now, this is an exciting young gymnast to get to watch. Jorna Reiman of Finland. He's 19 from the lovely city of Tampere, close to Helsinki, just a little north. Junior European champion in Munich in 2022, same year that he won the European Youth Olympic Festival title. Fifth best in qualification. And that is a really assured beginning. A Dragalescu from Raymond. He has got some senior honours as well. All around bronze medal at the Northern European Championships. Lacks a little tidiness in the air at times, and he's quite piked as he lands, but he's utterly going in the right direction with that Dragolescu. And it's very impressive when you've got a 19 year old coming through and they're producing a 5.6 and a 5.2 difficulty. 14.666 up by hundreds from qualification. In this second vault, the uh, Kasumatsu one and a half. Obviously, the long term goal will be to try to turn that into the Lopez and to make it a 5.6 Kasumatsu double. Now he has not yet qualified for the games and he had a tough time in Cairo and Cottbus. This is promising. That was his Kasamatsu one and a half. Again, a little of the form needs some attention, but he's going in the right direction. 13.166 for Namor puts her in fourth position. An unintentional dismount. With the uh, backhand spring, backhand spring to two feet. 
to a layout to two feet. The issue there, putting her out of contention. Julia Suarez of Brazil, third best in qualification. The 18 year old, more experienced than her teammate, Lima. She's from Curitiba. Opens with the uh, candle mount. Curitiba in Paraná State in the southeast of Brazil. Little in the way of oscillation on the x axis in the wolf turns. Difficulty getting the line back on the beam established coming out of the back tuck. Slightly jarred landing with the uh, double pike. Some strong elements to that routine from Julia Suarez. And uh, Jona Raymond is in fifth place with a 14.549 average, 14.433 for his second vault. So he has gone up by over a tenth from qualification, which is really strong for a first World Cup final. Nice to see what he's capable of Hong Kong, China. look forward to more from him from a youngster to a veteran volta two-time asian games champion and somebody who may well fling himself quite literally back into olympic qualification prospects here he got a bronze in cairo was 30th in Cottbus. this is shekwai hung of hong kong china 14.916 in qualification. Well, I never. <laughs> he has got some serious, serious difficulty. 6.0 difficulty is the Rise Guang vault. We haven't seen a 6.0 difficulty vault until this stage of the final. That's the Tsukuhara double back tuck with a full twist added, named after the Democratic People's Republic of Korea's Rise Guang. Vault named for him in 2013, I believe. Fourteen point nine six six, not quite as secure as qualification. A two tenths execution drop. But we've got a potential leader here, and we've certainly got a good case for a medal. Fourteen point six one six is occupying bronze. There aren't many out there who indicate a Dragalescu as vault number two. And it's a good Dragalescu. Again, he's a little unsteady on his landing, but for Shekwai Hung, he could start to feature in the Paris 2024 race. 13.033 for Julia Suarez. That concludes the beam final. She finishes in fifth position. We'll bring you the full standings in just a moment. And now the gymnastics round. We are waiting for score. 
The classified results in the balance beam competition. Zhang Qingying taking the gold medal. Takizawa Karuko on her senior international debut wins silver. And a big result for Nina Derval of Belgium as the top performer of the Paris 2024 hopefuls through the balance beam pathway. She is ready to breathe and sigh in relief. <laughs> 14.866. Shekwai Hung has secured the silver medal. 14.766 for the second vault up from qualification. The classified results in the men's vault competition. Nazar Cheperny of Ukraine winning the title. Shekwai Hung of Hong Kong, China taking second place ahead of Harry Hepworth of Great Britain on the tie-break criteria by virtue of the highest scoring vault, single highest scoring vault. Tseng Wei Sheng finishes in fourth position, the gymnast from Chinese Taipei, trying to help his own Paris 2024 prospects, but Shek is the gentleman who's really come out of this well from a Paris perspective because that means that he has got a bronze and a silver to call upon. He'll head to Doha in a good place. That brings to a close our first couple of finals as the traditional intermediary dancing gets underway in Baku. And Nina Derval might well be dancing in joy. This is how she took third place, but the fact it's a bronze medal, with all due respect to a bronze medal, is not the big story here. It's the quality of finish when it comes to Olympic qualification for Derwal that really matters. Takazawa Karuko, great to see her on the senior stage. The teenager from Honshu in Japan winning a silver medal in her first international competition. But frankly, from the moment that the final began, the pressure had been put on the rest of them by Zhang Qingying. She took gold. We have so much more to come. The men's pommel horse and women's floor finals. They will be next. The gymnastics pass 2024 is very important here for the sports family. It is the world. due to uh, begin in about 10 minutes the next final so you have uh, just a moment to gather your composure gather your thoughts and uh, we can have a look back at how the medals were won on vault harry hepworth of the united kingdom of great britain and northern ireland securing the bronze medal only on tie break criteria shek wai hung won the silver that uh, 14.966 volt for him, very important. Nazar Ciperni, the winner of the gold medal. The Ukrainian securing his fifth World Cup title, his 11th medal overall. Well, if you're wondering what's on the big screen here, the European, or was on the big screen just a moment ago, the <laughs> European Championships of Team Gym are taking place in Baku in October. And 
They've just announced that in the arena. Promise you it provoked more excitement than it looks like it did now. It's going to be a wonderful competition, the uh, Team Gym European Championships. If you're not familiar with Team Gymnastics, it's not part of the Olympic uh, pantheon of sports, but this is a rich and diverse sport, gymnastics. Yes, you're watching artistic now, but there are so many disciplines. And if you are somebody that only really knows artistic gymnastics, dip your toe in the water with the likes of rhythmic, with acrobatic, with aerobic, with trampoline and tumbling with team gymnastics with parkour you will discover an absolute box of treasures worthy of accompanying you on a metaphorical silk road journey of gymnastics riches The National Gymnastics Arena was built in anticipation of the first European Games, which took place in Baku in 2015. Very special event it was for Baku. It, it was something that really put Baku on the sporting map. It had had uh, an association, of course, with motor racing, with Formula One for a while, and uh, was starting to develop a little presence in terms of its football aspirations, but the European Games really turned all eyes towards Baku in 2015. And what was so interesting was that two years later it hosted another multi-sport event, the Islamic Solidarity Games. And it is absolutely true what they say about Baku, that it is the, the meeting point of the East and the West. You felt it so strikingly when attending those two beautiful multi-sport events that were so very different. One event that really looked towards Europe and, and looked westwards and one that looked to the uh, Islamic world and had a, a beautiful opening ceremony that celebrated the Islamic golden age. It was a, a great education for everyone watching it. They showcase wonderfully the great uh, developments in scholarship in the Islamic Golden Age, the uh, scientific accomplishments. And you can see many of the architectural accomplishments of the Islamic Golden Age when you are in Baku. Don't think of it solely as a place of high rise buildings and uh, skyscrapers and bright lights. It is that, but it also has these uh, extraordinary Islamic Golden Age architectural gems. <laughs> Enough of the historical pontificating. On we go with the finals. It's not often that we get to enjoy in tandem the men's pommel horse and the women's floor. It's one of the idiosyncrasies of how the Baku World Cups operate, that they run the pommel horse competition on the second day. And those of you who've been following the World Cup events and the Olympic qualification pathway with pommel horse, you will know that it's one of the most challenging to extricate yourself from with an Olympic ticket. The field is, well, quite frankly, wonderful for us and awful for them because this is full of contenders. Also, the women's floor final, we have, uh, that's not Hilary Heron of Panama, that's Steven Nederozic. Charlie's Murds of Austria. Champion at uh, national level, Kelly Namor of Algeria, the reigning African all-around champion. Welcome to the international scene, Risa Sponder of the United States of America. She's the reigning junior national champion, very good tumbler. Laura Casabuena of Spain, Mediterranean Games medalist and a World Cup medalist in Cairo on floor. 
Or Yu Shen of the People's Republic of China, the reigning world universities champion on floor. Emma Malabuyo of the Philippines, silver medalist at the Asian Championships in Singapore last year. And Sugihara Aiko of Japan. <laughs> yes, exactly. She is there. She is back. And of all people, you can't miss out to Sugihara Aiko because it's wonderful that she's made her return to international competition. Now, to the pommel horse. We've attempted twice to identify Stephen Nedorozic and it hasn't quite worked out on either occasion, but he is there and he is the world champion from 2021. Benjamin Osberger is alongside him. Patrick Hoops, his teammate, stares back at Mr. Nedorozic. Excited to be there. Lichi Kai, top qualifier and Olympic silver medalist in Tokyo. Double world championship medalist, the Jordanian Ahmad Abu Al Soud. He's in a great position to qualify for the Games, as is Nariman Kurbanov of Kazakhstan. Xiao Yujan of Chinese Taipei. Fourth best in qualification, first final he's made in this cycle of World Cup events. And Albanian Matvei Petrov, who was fifth in Cottbus. There we go, we've got uh, the formal introduction for Sugihara Aiko of Japan. The finalists in the women's floor competition. Top in qualification, number six in the order, Oyu Shen, the reigning World Universities champion on floor and just about everything else. She was a star in her home games in Chengdu last year. Second best in qualification, but only on the execution tiebreak. Risa Sponda, the young American, just 15. She's the youngest in the final. But if you can win a junior national title in the USA, you are quite a prospect. The men's pommel horse final. Top qualifier, Li Chi Kai of Chinese Taipei. He goes fourth in the order. Didn't make the final in Cairo. Didn't make the final in Cottbus. Might be looking at the Asian Championships later this year as an all-arounder because he was a very good all-arounder in uh, world championship competitions and Olympic competitions in uh, seasons gone by. Now let's focus on those in this pommel horse final who are going for Olympic qualification. We look here at uh, Benjamin Osberger who will go second Li Chi Kai, who will go fourth. Ahmad Abu Al Sud, who'll go fifth. Nariman Kurbanov, who'll go sixth. Xiao Yu Jan, seventh. And Matvei Petrov, eighth. So it's only the two Americans that we take out of the Olympic qualification pathway here Stephen Nedorozic and Patrick Hoops. They certainly have the potential to feature on the podium, though. But we just remind ourselves that if they are on the podium, their points scores will be removed and only the gymnasts who are able to qualify for Paris 2024 will be given points due to their position in the leaderboard. So you could finish behind the two Americans and still pick up the maximum 30 points. I hope all of that made sense. As I've said uh, throughout these World Cups, it is a complicated qualification process. On floor, the gymnast that we are not thinking about from a Paris 2024 pathway point of view, Risa Sponder of the USA, who is part of a team that's already qualified, or Yu Shen of China, part of a team that's already qualified, and the same for Sugihara Aiko of Japan. So most World of the gymnasts that you're about to see over these two finals are going for Paris 2024 Your qualification. Good luck to them all. Floor exercise. Please welcome first gymnast representing Panama. Now here's a gymnast in a different position 
from the ones we've talked about from a team point of view, Hilary Heron has secured a spot at Paris 2024 as an all-arounder, a named spot. So she is Olympics bound. She was the seventh best in qualification, the 20-year-old from Panama City. She really does conclude the routine with such a strong piece of tumbling. Unfortunate loss of equilibrium on one of the tumbling passes from this very decorated young gymnast from Panama. 13 medals in the Americas. How lovely to see Stephen Nedorozic back in World Cup competition. The world champion from Kitakyushu in 2021. He was the second best in qualification. And he is also the reigning three-time consecutive national champion. It's a superb accomplishment. He tends to get such good clearance. Very fluid. Look at the height he's got in his vendor swings, the woos. Magyar Shivado, great body position. This is very nice. Oh, that's a treat. What a good start. Steven Nedorozic, lovely beginning to the final. Graduate of electrical engineering. He's a specialist in data storage. And I think that's going to be quite a big number that's being stored in the computer after that first performance. The young man from Massachusetts has just thrown down a massive challenge to everyone else in that final with uh, that very uh, stylish display. The last time we saw Stephen Edorozic at a World Cup was, I believe, in Melbourne in 2020, just before the pandemic. That was before his rise to fame. 11.8 for Hilary Heron. So she's down by 1.2 from qualification. The lion's share of that being the putting down of the hands when tumbling. Charlies Mertz of Austria. Fifth best in qualification.
A gymnast who really has handled the occasion so well across the three World Cup qualification events. Hello, that's a big number. 15.4 for Steven Nederozic. He's up from qualification. Just up by hundreds. But that's a great start. He always looks so happy to be at a gymnastics competition. Benjamin Osberger of France. Eighth in qualification. He was fourth in Cairo. Eighth in Cottbus. Aiming for a place at the games. His home games. A slight flicker on the handstand, but he controlled it nicely. Oh, he lost the leg form on the single arm work. And didn't he clamp down on that? Again, has a little leg separation. Big deductions, but... He's kept himself from losing a full mark through real strength and poise. Woos were good. Some nice difficulty there working principally on one arm. And he pirouettes round well to conclude the routine. There will be some cost for those form breaks, two of them quite pronounced, but very composed to arrest the decline. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are waiting for score of Charlie's Mertz. Charlie's Mertz, 13.566. She's up by half a mark from qualification. Three tenths of execution, two tenths of difficulty. Yet again, this young Austrian, the 18 year old from the east of the country in Eisenstadt, has delivered in a World Cup final. And that could be the one that gets her to the games. It'll get her very close, certainly. That's brilliant for the Mertz family. All three of the sisters are gymnasts. Kaylee Namour of Algeria. Things have gone brilliantly on the uneven bars. Not as well on beam. She was the fourth best qualifier on floor. Let us continue to reflect on the strong development of 17-year-old Kelly Namor of Algeria, already Paris-bound after finishing eighth at the World Championships in the all-around competition. Osberger, 14.266. He is down four-tenths from qualification. All of that execution due to those breaks in form that I mentioned earlier. Now, this will be interesting to see. Patrick Hoops of the United States of America, 21 from Utah. He won the Pommel Horse title at a domestic competition called the Winter Cup at the start of the year. It's a very popular event in the USA. He was fourth at the national championships last year. And he is uh, 
undergraduate majoring in legal studies. Looking quite smooth so far. It'll be interesting to see if he can keep the clearance strong as the routine goes on. Quite close to the apparatus, but he's powerful in those vendor swings. Very nice. Very slight crossing of the legs, but it didn't last long. This is poised. Call came out from uh, the uh, US team on the sidelines to push through, and he did. Well done to Patrick Hoops, the young man from the United States of America, following his teammate Stephen Nedorozic. Second place for Kelly Nemour, 13.266. It's up by one tenth from qualification, just a little sharper in the execution. We've just seen one young American on pommel horse. It will be very interesting to see Reese Esponda of the USA on the floor. 15, the reigning junior national champion. She makes her senior international debut here. If you did not know that Reese Esponda is a very good young tumbler, you know now. <laughs> There's a prospect and a half. Patrick Hoops, 14.9. He's up from qualification. Anytime an athlete comes into a first World Cup final and improves from qualification, it's a very good step in their career. And that's what he's done. to Li Chi Kai of Chinese Taipei. 11th in Cairo, 29th in Cottbus, the silver medalist from Tokyo, exploring his options for how to get to the games. Top qualifier here though. His handstand work shows a little flare. On the subject of a little flare, here are some big flares. Good hip height, hands secure. And he goes again. Brilliant. Really precise flare work. Spins so well into the dismount. Matvey Petrov, watching that from the sidelines, was grinning like a Cheshire cat, enjoying the great sport that we were seeing from Lee Chikai. 12.833 from Rhys Esponda. Down by two tenths of difficulty and three tenths of execution from qualifying, but certainly a, a good display from the youngster. Charlie's Mertz leads the floor final at the halfway stage. That's very big for her from a Paris 2024 point of view. It 
it will be intriguing to see where Lee features with Neda Rosic on 15.4 and Lee scoring 15.533 in the preliminary round. One imagines this is going to be quite tight. And we've still got some huge contenders to come. Just to further clarify or possibly complicate, <laughs> depending on how you see it, the picture at this stage, only three of the four performances, if you do compete at all four World Cups, actually count towards your qualification process for Paris. And of course, not all gymnasts do compete at all four World Cups. Not all gymnasts can compete at all four World Cups. So some do have a little more breathing space perhaps than others. Quite a lot of deliberation going on when it comes to Li Chi Kai's score. I think it's pretty much the longest wait we've had so far for any single number over the course of this weekend. We have that number, 15.4, and he has gone into the lead. I did say I thought it would be tight, and it really is tight warm up time has ended and please welcome so the next lee chi kai floor, level Laura with Asabuena. steven nederozic they're in joint first place laura casabuena of spain eighth best in qualification bronze medalist in cairo Olympic qualification may feel uh, a bit like a prayer for a lot of the uh, gymnasts across these four World Cups, but that could be something of a ray of light for Laura Casabuena in terms of her Paris prospects. Ahmad Abu Al Saud of Jordan, two time World Championship medalist. He won in Cairo. He finished second in Cottbus. This could be the one for him, but he was only the fifth best in qualification.
always watch for how he cuts out sections of the apparatus like there. Often bypasses the middle to add extra difficulty. It's clever. His form's not quite as tidy as it has been. But he's done well. He's done very well. Ahmad Abu Al Saud. 28 year old from Amman, the sixth largest city in the Arab world. Very historic city in a beautiful country. He's spoken so many times about how. We'll come back to him in a moment. 12.833 for Laura Casabuena. Almost the same as qualification, down by just one tenth. She's in third position. But she is in second place when it comes to those who are trying to qualify for the Games. Wu Yushen of the People's Republic of China, top in qualification, the reigning World Universities champion on floor. This is her first competition since the World Championship. She's part of a team that's already qualified for the Games. There really is some lovely, lovely work on floor going on at the moment in the Chinese team. The conscious effort they've made to make their orchestral choices closer to home, their choreography drawn from traditional Chinese dance. It's very exciting. 15 for Ahmad Abu Al Saud. He's up by almost three tenths from qualification. I was saying earlier that he's spoken about how much support he gets from his coaching staff, how good uh, the teamwork is. And he's repaying all of that in leaps and bounds for his progress of late. Nariman Kurbanov of Kazakhstan, third best in qualifying, 15.2. The reigning Asian champion, he won in Cottbus, he was fifth in Cairo. He's somebody who absolutely is pushing for a qualification spot. He'd like to be able to drop that fifth place from Cairo after Doha. Maybe just dropping a little low in places, but he always finds a way to keep the body straight. Those heels are crisply pressed together. His dismount kept it pretty simple Nariman Kurbanov 15.2 was the score in qualification it'll be interesting to look at his difficulty it was such a great performance in Cottbus from Kurbanov in a World Cup that has not traditionally been very enjoyable for him over the years he's had difficult results there but he won a couple of weeks ago
Well, Yu Shen was the top performer in qualification with 13.433. She is an undergraduate at the Beijing Sport University, which is one of the famous double first class universities. It used to be called the National Key Universities. She goes into second place, 13.533 for Ou Yushen. So she's hundreds behind Charlie's Mertz. This is the last gymnast who is attempting Paris 2024 qualification through this route. Emma Malabuyo of the Philippines, born in uh, Mountain View in California, 21 year old. Strong performance from Emma Malabuyo of the Philippines. <laughs> she is absolutely delighted with that display. She won the silver medal in Cairo. Kurbanov, 15.133. So that puts him in third position. It puts him above Ahmad Abu Al Saud, which is important. It puts him below Li Chi Kai. But he's still in a very, very good position along with Al Sud. The second gymnast from Chinese Taipei, Xiao Yu Jun. Fourth best in qualification. This is the first time he's made a final in this World Cup qualification process, but he does have five World Cup medals overall. He won the bronze medal at the World University Games in Chengdu, where his teammate Li Chi Kai won the title for a third consecutive time. Performing this well. Tidy, nice pirouette to finish from Xiao Yu Jian. That's the display that we've been waiting to see from him in qualification for Paris 2024 after he was 10th in Cairo and 26th in Cottbus. Well done to him on a resilient effort in Baku. Emma Malabuyo, 13.133, so she's up from qualification. She is in fourth position. That puts her above Laura Casabuena. We go to Sugihara Aiko of Japan. Welcome back to the 24-year-old from Osaka, two-time Olympian, and the reigning Japanese champion on floor. 
after her return. Starting off the display with a little James Bond orchestration and upon announcing her comeback, proving that tomorrow never dies, Sugihara Aiko of Japan. Back in international competition, Xiaoyu Jan 15.3. Wow, that's a great score for him. He's up by about half a mark from qualification. And he has put himself above Kurbanov and Abu Al Sud. Oh, this pommel horse qualification is brutal, but it's jolly good fun, isn't it, for us to watch to Madve Petrov of Albania. The European champion from 2020, another aspiring to qualify for the Games. Some fabulous pommel horse specialists are not going to make it through this route. Oh, he had a little leg bend going into the Busnari. Did well to get out of that. Good hip height in his flares. Just at times a slightly juddery display, perhaps. And by the way, he's the but Matvei Petrov continuing to prove that he's still a massive contender. Sugihara Aiko, 13 exactly for her. She's in fifth position and will bring you the classified results. A great result for Charlize Mertz of Austria in terms of Olympic qualification. She takes the gold medal in Baku. Oyushen and Kaylina Moore second and third. Then we look at Emma Malabuyo, the next after Mertz, aiming for a place at the Games. Good result for her. Laura Casabuena also picking up some very useful points. Nice to see the return of Sugihara Aiko as well. Back in international competition for the first time since Tokyo 2020. How big a number for Petrov, 14.7, down a little from qualification, he's in seventh place. He was the first reserve for the Olympic final in Tokyo, the 33-year-old. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Flashma.
The classified results in the pommel horse competition. Joint gold for Li Chi Kai and Stephen Nedorozik of Chinese Taipei and the United States of America, respectively. Xiao Yu Jian, also of Chinese Taipei, takes a great bronze medal. Nariman Kurbanov and Ahmad Abu Al Sud, virtually inseparable, but Kurbanov picking up some points uh, to give him a bit of an advantage. Xiao trying to come back from a long way back considering he was 10th in Cairo and 26th in Cottbus, so it may be a bridge too far, but he's certainly done himself a big favour with that result, picking up the maximum points for the Olympic hopefuls. And that leaves us just with one more final to take place, the men's horizontal bar. Over on the women's floor, it was a bronze medal to Kalia Namur of Algeria. Taking second place and silver, Oyu Shen. Gymnast from the People's Republic of China with a very well-controlled and impressive performance. The title won by Charles Mertz, who really threw some bold difficulty at this routine. 13.566. Paris is beckoning surely now for the Austrian. And just to add to that, it is a first ever gold medal for Mertz in World Cup competition. That's another important milestone in her career. On the men's pommel horse, the bronze medal went to Xiao Yujan of Chinese Taipei. Taking joint gold, Li Chi Kai and Stephen Nederozik of Chinese Taipei and the United States of America, respectively. The next final's due to begin in 19 minutes' time. They may bring it forward, though, because they did do that with the uh, previous two finals. They were brought forward by about five minutes. So don't go too far away, because one big horizontal bar final is impending. Just to confirm that there was an inquiry 
submitted by Sugihara Aiko and her coaching staff. But uh, difficulty score has not altered, so there are no changes to those classified results for the women's floor competition. Well, apologies uh, for my incorrect previous announcement. It was just announced there was no change to the score of Sugihara Aiko, but uh, clearly that was a little preemptive, and the uh, arena presenter has just corrected that information. 13.1, Sugihara Aiko. It doesn't actually change the standings, though. It does improve her score, brings a little closer to Emma Malabuyo. The score for Sugihara Aiko has been increased by one tenth. And that brings it level with her difficulty score from qualification. So all seems to be well there. The classified results in the women's floor competition in Baku the gold medal for Charlize Mertz of Austria. Big result for her in terms of Paris 2024. She's well positioned. Oyu Shen takes silver for the People's Republic of China and Algeria's Kelly Namor wins the bronze medal. Emma Malabuya of the Philippines with a really important result for her own prospects, finishing in fourth place.
aziz dostlar, işi gimnastların kronikler final çıkış var mı işte? Finalçıları karşılayın. The last final at the Baku World Cup of 2024, the penultimate Olympic qualification event in World Cup artistic gymnastics. Still, continental pathways will be open to some of the athletes. But who will go into Doha in a strong position, even in a qualified spot? Here are the contenders. Xiaoriu Teng of the People's Republic of China, all around silver medalist at the last Olympics. Ilyas Yoriu of Cyprus, the reigning Commonwealth Games horizontal bar champion. Egypt's Ahmed El Marahi, an African Championship medalist on the horizontal bar. Robert Tvorogal of Lithuania, European champion from 2020. Italy's Carlo Macchini, the runner-up at the last European Championships. Artur Nori Mariano, world champion in 2019 and the reigning Pan American Games champion. Angel Barajas of Colombia, bronze medalist at the Junior World Championships. Tang Hung of Chinese Taipei, the leader in World Cup Olympic qualification so far. Tang Chahung will be the last to go. He's virtually Paris bound after two gold medals so far. The finalists in the horizontal bar competition and the top performer in qualification, Arta Nori Mariano of Brazil. 14.466 was his score. Second best, Ilias Yoriu of Cyprus. He will go second in this final. Well, the usual housekeeping ahead of this final. Let's look at those who are actively attempting to qualify for the games via this route. This is one of them. Ilias Yoriu, he'll be second. Ahmed El Marahi, who's third. Robert Tvorogal, who's fourth. Arta Nori Marianu, who is sixth. And then we have Angel Barajas and Tang Chahang. Although the situation for Brazil is that uh, there is a non-nominative place for Brazil at the Games. And that was courtesy of the last World Championship, so things are a little more interesting and uh, complicated there for the Brazilian squad. And I'll just remind you that the America's spot has been taken by Aldris Nin Reyes of the Dominican Republic after the Pan American Games, which was used as the continental qualifier. All of the other continental qualifiers happen next year. It's a bit of a painful one that for Ahmed El Marahi. Xiaoriu Teng is part of a team that's already qualified. Carlo Macchini is part of a team that's already qualified. So those two are not going to intercede in terms of uh, Paris qualification here. Let us find out who ends up 
in the best position going to Doha. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we continue with horizontal bar finalists. Please welcome first athlete representing China, Ruoteng Xiao. From the People's Republic of China, Xiao Ruoteng. Xiao Ruoteng was the fifth best performer in qualification with 14.266. We haven't seen him at a World Cup competition since Doha last year where he didn't make any finals. But he was the runner-up in the all-around competition at the last Olympic Games. Straight Kachev, his first release move. Straddle Kachev connected to the pike Kachev. Nice fluency with the in bar work. Slightly wild coming out of the pirouette, perhaps. Dismount. Oh, well, dismount was very good and then just picked up a few deductions for that uh, delayed loss of stability. Unexpected additional need for stability right at the conclusion of that display. He was part of the Chinese team last year, won the Asian Games title in Hangzhou. 13.8 same difficulty as qualification, the execution down by four tenths of a mark. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the next finalist from Cyprus, Ilias Giorgio. Second in this men's horizontal bar final, aspiring to a place at the Games. Cyprus is Ilias Yoriu. He was eighth in Cairo. Didn't pick up any points in Cottbus. His Casina had to, a little imprecision in form, but some good power. Coleman, similar. Straddle Kachev is connected nicely to a pie Kachev. He's going well here. And then the straight Kachev. He's put a lot of work into this routine. And his dismount involves a big step forwards however it was a really accomplished display Ilias Yoriu of Cyprus the reigning Commonwealth Games champion the best we've seen from him in World Cup quali oh, I should say Olympic qualification so far let's have a look back at this performance from the 24 year old Cypriot A little piked on the dismount, hence the big step forwards. Now we are waiting for 
14.433 in qualification. He has been on two occasions a finalist at the World Championships. the Commonwealth Games it was hard to tell what meant more to him emotionally that gold medal on the horizontal bar or the team bronze medal because the uh, Cypriot squad was jubilant about that 14.3 is his number so he's up three tenths in difficulty from qualification his execution is down so overall he's down by just over a tenth but a lot of difficulty in that display He's done well. Another Olympic hopeful is Ahmed El Marahi of Egypt. He was the first reserve a couple of weeks ago in Cottbus. He was sixth in his home World Cup in Cairo. 28 year old is a qualified a geologist from Alexandria University. He's been competing for many, many years now on the international scene. He's got some really spectacular work on this piece. Can he maintain his accuracy? The Casina, and that's where he came off in the warm-up. It was better, but he lost all of his swingfulness. And unfortunately... He does have to reset. Oh, and then the Coleman just had a real wildness to it. So unfortunate. It's so unfortunate. And when one considers that he did not make the final in Cottbus and was sixth in Cairo, this makes it euphemistically, shall we say, very difficult for him. And you can only sympathise. He's such an interesting gymnast. So much of what he does is daring and bold. And it is so regrettable that it didn't work out on this occasion, this big occasion for him. You've got to admire how he goes for it, though. And it's so marginal, just slightly out on the angle of reconnection and all of that kinetic energy is gone and the gymnast loses their swing.
11.166 for Ahmed El Marahi. To a two time Olympian, Robert Tvorogal of Lithuania. 14.2 in qualification. He was fifth in Cairo, won the bronze in Cottbus. He's very much contending here. Two places available for each apparatus. The straight catch F. Very poised looking in bar work. Nice uh, snap from Stolder into handstand. Then the straddle catch F. Good dismount as well from Robert Tvorogel. Silver medalist at the European Championships in Munich two years after he won the gold medal. He has also been a medalist on parallel bars at continental level. He is just one medal away from 10 in World Cup competition. The most recent was a gold medal in Mersin in Turkey at the end of 2022. 14.333. Is a good step up from qualification. He goes into the gold medal position. He's gone ahead of Ilyas Yuriu by a few hundreds. Another strong performance from Bobby Tvorogal. How important extra little place could be now we have still got the top qualifier to come Arta Nori we've also got Angel Barajas the young Colombian and we have going last of all the gentleman who could make it secure Tang Cha Hung the winner in Cairo and Cottbus. to the last four performances in this men's horizontal bar final oh, in Baku please welcome the next finalist representing Italy 
Pizarro Mancini. Carlo Macchini of Italy, the runner-up at the European Championships last year, his biggest international honours to date. He has twice finished fourth at the World Championships, once on this piece and once in team competition. Winds up into that move popularised by Alias Pegan. Then he's got that piked Kovac. This is very interesting, unusual work. Then the more traditional Coleman. Had to steady himself there for a moment. He dismounts nicely, Carlo Macchini. He's always memorable on this piece. There's a, a sense of uniqueness about his routine construction that makes him exciting to watch. Winner of three World Cup medals. Isn't that lovely? Coming out of the tuck position, forwards momentum, re grasping. And then the Kovac in the pike position. Sixth best in qualification, 14.266. 13.433 here. He does have a big, big execution deduction. I mentioned that problem earlier. When he was uh, moving into the handstand position, had to reset, and he's lost quite a lot across the routine. Biggest difficulty we've seen of anyone, though. Artenori Mariano of Brazil, top qualifier, 14.466. Sixth in Cottbus, didn't make the final in Cairo. Begins with a Kachev. And the straddle variation and the pike variation. And there the full twisting Jaeger that he does so nicely to a Yamawaki. Secure from Atanori Mariano. <laughs> A typically Atanori Mariano response as well. Winner of the Olympic Games, gold and bronze medalist of the World Championship. He's already stood on an Olympic podium in his home games in Rio when he finished third on floor. Aiming for Olympics number three. And he wants his mum there in Paris, watching him after all that she's been through. She's uh, had such dreadful health. And he supported her an awful lot, just as she supported him so much along the way. He's so motivated now by looking after his mum and giving her the joy of seeing him compete at the Olympiad in Paris.
following in her footsteps as well in that he's a graduate of physical education from Paulista University and his mum was a PE teacher. 14.333 for Artanori Mariano. He's in second place. Carlo Macchini is... Uh, sorry, not Carlo Macchini. Robert Sforagal is the leader. And that's on the execution tiebreak. Angel Barajas, penultimate gymnast in this final. Bronze medalist in Cairo. Didn't feature in Cottbus. He's been performing very well on the parallel bars as well. Seventeen year old who's fast making a name for himself. Casino with power and purpose. Kovac Coleman. This is such a difficult routine. And a Kachev into another one. He's got a couple of combined release and regrasps in this routine. This is some young man, Angel Barajas of Colombia. 6.8 was his difficulty score in qualification. Again, he is able to produce enormous complexity at such a young age. In places, his execution is not as secure as some of the other more experienced athletes, but he builds his score with compelling and engrossing difficulty. Dear friends, we see the highlight of Colombian gymnast Angel Barajas on the screen. As a Colombian on Masmude, that all just there. Fourteen point four three three in qualification. That would be good enough for a leading score from anyone now. And just one to go after this. So Robert Tvorigal is guaranteed a medal. Another 14.333, would you believe? 6.8 difficulty, so with the lower execution, he goes in th third place. That means Tvorigal leading, Mariano second, Barajas third, all 14.333. Tang Chiahung of Chinese Taipei. The winner in Cairo and Cottbus, the King of Cats, with an opportunity to get the cream. Casino, oh, he's done well to fight through that, my word. A lot of deductions to come, but he stayed on. Oh, and then that Yamawaki with a full twist. So much power to carry that off. Straight Kachev. Piked Kachev. Straddle Kachev connected. Now that's a lovely finish.
And he has put himself into a great position across the first couple of events. Remember that nothing is officially confirmed until after the Doha World Cup. But Tang Xia Hung might well be feeling very confident going into Doha. He does have a big form break though after reconnecting from that casino. Isn't that just extraordinary, the uh, Yamawaki with a full twist. The emotions of Olympic qualification. The last score to come in, 14.333, occupies every space on the podium. Morgal Mariano Barajas, one, two, and three. Fourteen point two. He's in fifth position. Close. He had an extra two tenths of difficulty from qualification. Not quite there. The classified results in the horizontal bar competition: bronze for Angel Barajas of Colombia. Silver for Artanori Mariano of Brazil and gold for Robert Svorigal of Lithuania. The execution scores 7.533, 8.533, 3, 8.833. Tiebreak criteria in operation across the podium. We have in just a short while the five victory ceremonies, so please stay with us to enjoy the scenes of celebration at the National Gymnastics Arena in Baku. The bronze medal in the men's horizontal bar competition was won by the teenager from Colombia, Angel Barajas. The silver medal won by Artenori Mariano of Brazil. And the winner of the gold medal, Lithuanian Robert Dvorogal. Big result for him in terms of his prospects of going all the way to Paris. We'll leave you with the flash mob, but before we bring you the ceremonies. We go drink drinks and take shots until we fall out. Like a roof on fire. Now baby give a booty naked, take off all your clothes and light the roof on fire. Tell her, tell her, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, baby, Dear friends, dear guests, dear athletes, put your hands together and let's start.
Aziz dostlar gəlin flash mobçularımıza ürəkdən alqışlayan dostlar. Hanımlar və cənablar, mükafatlandırma mərasiminə başlayırıq. Ladies and gentlemen, we proceed with award ceremony. Please welcome the medalists. We now begin the first of five victory ceremonies in Baku. Victory ceremony for the men's vault competition at the Baku World Cup. The bronze medalist at Great Britain's Harry Hepworth. Taking the silver medal on a tie break with Harry Hebworth, Shek Wai Hung of Hong Kong, China. And the winner in a very tight men's vault final, Nazar Chepernyi of Ukraine. 14.9 and two 14.866 scores. That's all that separated those three on the podium. Virtually nothing at all. It was Chepernyi that got the job done and will now hear the Ukrainian national anthem in his honor. The medalists in the men's vault competition at the Baku World Cup of Artistic Gymnastics.
İtman Cimnastik aşı üzere Dünya Kubokunda Kalsın Cimnastların Cimnastik Eteninde Mükafatlandırmasına başlayalım. The victory ceremony in the women's balance beam competition. Belgium's Nina Derval winning the bronze medal. Great result for her with the Olympics closing in. Takazawa Kaoruko of Japan in a senior international debut takes the silver medal. Great performance from the teenager. 16 year old Zhang Xingying of the People's Republic of China, the Asian champion, wins in the city where East meets West. Tebriş edirik. Hediyeler Azərbaycan Gimnastika Federasyonu'nun əsli tərəfdaşı Hizri tərəfindən təqdim oldu. The medalists in the women's balance beam competition in Baku. The victory ceremony for the men's pommel horse competition. Joint gold medalists. The bronze medal to Xiao Yu Jian of Chinese Taipei. By far his best performance in this cycle of World Cup Olympic qualification. Two gold medalists, Li Chi Kai of Chinese Taipei and Stephen Nedorozic of the United States of America. Two totally different ways to build the same score. Diversity of style, 
unified by quality execution. and show your respect for the national anthem of the United States of America. Tabri Shedri. The medalists in the men's uh, pommel horse uh, competition in Baku at the National Gymnastics Arena. <laughs> Great respect amongst those gymnasts. What a good final it was. The victory ceremony in the women's floor competition at the World Cup of Artistic Gymnastics in Baku. The winner of the bronze medal, Kalia Namur of Algeria. The silver medalist, Oyushen of the People's Republic of China. 
And Charlize Mertz of Austria wins her first ever World Cup title. And this after a really strong display in Cottbus where she was third. She was fourth in Cairo. She goes to Doha with the job looking as though it's all but done. The sounds of Land de Berga, Land Amstrom, Land of the Mountains, Land by the River, the national anthem of Austria, adopted in 1946. The medalists in the women's floor competition in Baku. Just one ceremony remains, the men's horizontal bar, and it will be along any moment now. The victory ceremony for the men's horizontal bar competition at the World Cup in Baku. The bronze medalist, Colombia's Angel Barajas, this bright young prospect. Artenori Mariano of Brazil, the world champion from 2019, with a really important performance for his Olympic dreams. But what a couple of weeks it's been for Robert Tvorigal of Lithuania. He was fifth in Cairo, but then went to Cottbus, where he won the bronze medal. He's now won the gold here. The Lithuanian looking very good value now to be one of the most talked about names going into the last World Cup event. The medalist in the men's horizontal bar competition at the Baku World Cup 
of artistic gymnastics. A long month is ahead. The final Olympic qualification event, the Doha World Cup, in this World Cup cycle of apparatus pathways to Paris, takes place on the 19th and 20th of April. Those are the days of finals action. We wish you all the very best until that time and I hope you'll be able to join us again for more coverage from these World Cup events. It's destination Doha to find out the pathway to Paris.